President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's New Year message highlighted the challenges and achievements of the past year. He emphasized the peaceful transition of power and his commitment to improving Nigeria's economy, security, and overall well-being. He also addressed tough decisions made by his administration, such as removing fuel subsidy to stabilize the economy. He outlined uh, plans for infrastructure development, including electricity, supply, agricultural growth, and reforms to enhance the business environment. He noted that the 2024 budget focuses on defense, job creation, economic stability, and social welfare. President Bala Ahmed Tinubu also stressed his dedication to reducing inequality and ensuring equal opportunities for all Nigerians. He called for unity among citizens, irrespective of political differences, to work together for Nigeria's progress and prosperity. Therefore, in tonight's episode of Nigeria Today, we shall be delving into matters of significant concern as regards the President's New Year message and how best to implement the outlined plans for the year 2024 to the benefit of all Nigerians. Happy New Year! And thanks for joining us. I am your carrier, Clinton, and welcome to the first episode of Nigeria Today in the year 2024. Now, joining us in the studio to analyze the and discuss President Tinubu's New Year message is a distinguished guest and motivational speaker. Sam Ikopo. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you very much. <laughs> and also uh, joining us in the studio is another distinguished guest, a regular face of the program. And just like the first guest, he's also a friend of the house. He's a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst, Abubakar Ahmed Tadimo. Welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you for having me. Always oh. a delight. It's Thank quite you. remarkable to have you as my first guest for the year 2024. <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay, so uh, I'll start with you, uh, Sam. Now, how would you assess the overall tone and the New Year message of President Balak Tinubu? Well, thank you for that, and Happy New Year to all Nigerians. Um, the President's speech was pretty well balanced, I believe. He tried to cover all the critical grounds um, as much as he could during the speech. But I think what stood out for me was the tone. I think we're beginning to see, or government is beginning to see the need to really address the populace from their concerns, rather than talking over their heads. I, I felt it was a pretty good uh, speech altogether. It's a tough time for the government to um, engage with the people, but I think he did a pretty fine job as far as the overall speech went itself. Hmm. Okay, uh, and Tanimu, during the, the speech of the president, of course, he uh, mentioned the, the, the problem that we are so uh, conversant with, we are so, uh, uh, so common, the removal of the fear subsidy, the impact. Now, how uh, would you uh, uh, you know, what was, uh, will you say, uh, it's most significant or, or how would you uh, will assess the impact of these uh, uh, fuel subsidy on Nigerians? And of course, the efforts that the government has been making to mitigate uh, the effect. Um, truth be told, there is no point beating around the bush. The obvious reality of all Nigerians, we are seeing the effect of them. Um, the fuel subsidy removal and it has its attendant effect on other facets of the economy. Mm -hmm. Right now, a lot of Nigerians, both those that we think they have, the middle class and the downtrodden, we are in a complete state of um, quagmire. A lot of people cannot afford the basic necessity of life, feeding, um, accommodation, decent accommodation, decent. Um, wages in terms of salary, this decent um, income from businesses, they've all practically crumbled. During this festive time, I can assure you, a lot of people could not travel, a lot of people could not um, celebrate the way we, they used to celebrate. 
I know you know the cost of a bag of rice going for as high as 65,000 Naira. I happened to travel to Kaduna and uh, a friend of mine told me that the entire, almost the entire people in this local government, Hiwa local government, they've been completely ransacked that to the extent that they can no longer continue their daily subsistence of just even walking around, engaging in farming, engaging in trade. We have all this that is prevalent all over. And um, you can't go to any bank and make withdrawal of 100,000 as it is today. So what, what other indication do we need to reflect on to know that the government consistently have not gotten it right in terms of policy? But, but, but again, Tanimo, sorry to stop you, uh, you know, to cut you there. You said uh, a lot of people could not travel. Sure. Because, but the government did something about that, and quite yeah. a lot of people. I had some uh, persons in the, pro uh, you, you see, the program that did an evaluation, yeah. Yeah. you know, of yeah, people yeah, traveling, yeah, yeah. and they said a lot of people traveled. You, you see, you know, most most of the speeches and the promises that the government mm. have been making over the years, mm. because it's, it has been consistently not have been fulfilled, even not up to fifty percent. So most people take these um, high-sounding speeches with a pinch of salt. Mm. The, even this uh, intervention by the government, a lot of people were skeptical. They don't know what will happen if they uh, maybe travel to their uh, uh, villages and they will not be able to come back to the. And if you look at it, the, it's more or less a cosmetic approach. It, it will not. Go, it naturally cannot go around. So a lot of people still could not travel. I can tell you for free. But at least it was an effort. If you see, <laughs> why not empower people to be able to do the basic uh, things that they used to do? Okay, Tanibu, we'll, we'll get to, to that. Now, uh, back to you, Sam. What do you feel is uh, the mood of the people as regards the president's uh, you know, New Year message? Well, the, the, the mood of the people regarding the message, I, I wouldn't be able to judge that mm. because I know many Nigerians have stopped listening. But uh, if, if, if I rather address the mood of the people towards the um, policy changes or the strategies the government mm -hmm. is putting in place. But concerning the speech, like I said, for the few who listened, it was balanced. Whether it will lead to results uh, is something we're all still waiting to see. But I think he, he did pretty well in the speech itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, still on you, uh, Sam. Uh, during the message, uh, the president made a comment. He said, we are co-heirs. No, in relation to what you're saying, he said, we are co-heirs to the commonwealth of the nation. Now, how can you, uh, how can the present administration make the people believe this? Because quite a lot of persons are, are like, oh, it's the government thing. Mm. You know, they believe so much that um, they, uh, when you say commonwealth, they say it's a government's thing. You know, we are here, they are, they are, yeah, we are there, mm. they, are, they are there, we are here. So how can they make the people believe that we are co as you know, to the commonwealth of the nation? Well, I, I think the more the government tries to make the people believe, mm. the harder it is going to get for government. What I think government should do rather is to address critical issues. All of us are Nigerians. We know that there was a need for a correction in the economy. We knew from well before the last administration that things were going wrong. We knew that a day would come when correction would be needed. When do we want that to happen? If we have a president that's taken the bull by the horn and we are hurting, I'm hurting, my staff are hurting, but there must be a point in time when something has to be done. The question is, is this the time? Second question is, is it the right people? Third question is, how much intelligence are they bringing into making these things happen? And I think we will see that over time. Mm -hmm. But one other thing I would like to say is, however bad we feel, however good we feel, we're in this for at least four years. So if we start thinking constructively, despite the pain, we'll come out quicker. If we have a PD party for four years, I don't think we'll be any better. In fact, it will just make the government say, well, the people, no matter what you do, they don't listen anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think both parties must come together, the leaders and the people. The leaders should continue to be frank and honest and show us they mean what they're saying by their behavior the way they spend money, the way they use money. 
I was not particularly pleased with the uh, items in the budget. Now, it's too late for change for Nigeria. We don't need change. It's too late. What Nigeria needs is transformation. And the leaders have to know the difference. So running budgets the way we normally do, we're going to build this structure, we're going to build that structure, I think we're, it's too late for that. We need transformation. Transformation being where there's a change of context, so you get the kind of results you never knew were possible before. That's where we are. It's about survival. Change won't do it for us. Mm. So, uh, Tani, <laughs> back to you. Now, uh, what is your impression of the President's plan for infrastructure development? Because he talks so much about what and what uh, his administration is doing to ensure that we have this, especially in the power sector. So, what's your impression of that? Well, when you look at it, I think if you want to make um, proper analysis, we shouldn't really restrict ourselves to the city centers. <coughs> you need to go to the various local government and you see that um, although they are bringing in a semblance of privatization, the past still remains the same. Our challenge over time has not been about only production, even though we are producing very, very low. Mm -hmm. It's about transmission and giving account in terms of... Um, uh, payment for services um, rendered. So a lot of people till this moment cannot have stable electricity and it's affecting businesses negatively. Before now, the alternative was to resort into um, a, a personal generating plant. And now the prices of um, petroleum products, diesel, the normal PMS, they've all gone up. So it means a lot of businesses have actually closed. They, they are no more in, in business. Others have tried other things. So it's a welcome development in terms of if we are seeing it practically. But even in Abuja here, mm -hmm. ordinary metering is a problem. Mm -hmm. Paying for services is a problem. So and it's supposed to be a private sector driven thing. If your transformer today is having an uh, issue, the, the the private entity, Abuja Electricity, they, they are expecting the host community to pay for it or they will remain perpetually in darkness. You know, that climb, no matter the situation, nobody will take you off the national grid for whatever reason it, the reason the, so the issue will be resolved but you remain connected because you know the importance that is placed on sustainable power in our own climate the reverse is the case a lot of businesses before now they've not actually relied on um, uh, on um, the electricity supplied by the government rather they use other means we encourage uh, other states you know it seems that has been liberalized the question that we should be asking has that been translated into action? All states in the co country have the capacity, the right to create their own platform, but they have not been doing it because if you look at it, to be fair, the resources are not there. There is paucity of funds. So they cannot, most states are, are able to barely pay their salaries. And uh, there's a trend that has been going on, which I'm personally aware of. Majority of the states are highly indebted and geared to various commercial banks. They've assessed loans for as high as 30 percent and some running into billions of naira 300 billion so anything they are, you are they are presenting most of the budget um, presentation they are making because federal government cannot do it alone you need the involvement of the state government of the local government local government uh, government governance is should be cascaded down to the lowest level but as, as i'm telling you now everybody is relying on the federal government the various state governments, unfortunately, the kind of um, go governors that we have, and they've completely uh, emasculated their states. I'm telling you, and um, for me personally, I've taken it out on behalf of some of my clients to even write petition to the central bank, to the debt management office, to the fiscal responsibility commission. We have enabling laws for all those, but because of corruption, which has been the bane, no matter the kind of programs and policy you try to implement to execute. If you cannot tackle the issue of corruption, then you just make a mockery of everything. If you look at the budget, uh, when my uh, co-analyst was analyzing, he talked about leading by examples. So if you look at some of the items, you just recently we saw the National Assembly members, they are buying expensive um, cars worth $265 million. The president is buying a yacht of about $5 billion. What, 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 do we, what kind of example? There are actions that you don't need to even... Uh, put it out to the public <coughs> domain because it has a different people who think they are suffering they are making sacrifices and those in the government are at various levels they are not 
demonstrating. They're not leading by example. Okay, now, uh, Sam, having had uh, what Tani Mo had to say there, now, the president also highlighted, he said the job of a prosperous, of ensuring a prosperous nation is not that of the government officials alone. The citizens, Nigerians, we all have a role to play. Now I ask, should we neglect our own roles and, you know, just heap the blame on the government? Well, um, we all have a role to play. And government, people talk about government as if they're a bunch of aliens who came in and took over the society. It's still people like us who go into government. Um, Daniel was talking about power generation, uh, electricity. It's very complicated. Nigerians think that it's pretty simple. There's the generation aspect. There's the transmission aspect. Then there's the retail end. Many Nigerians are energy thieves because they think the cost of power is high and they think it's inefficient anyway. And their backup like diesel now is so expensive. So there's corruption, yes, yeah, but sometimes the corruption is forced on the fact that there are inefficiencies in the system. We need to address that. And our institutions should be stronger in the area of enforcement and monitoring. For example, if the Bureau of Public Enterprises says we're privatizing power, in a climate like this, you can't just do that and walk away and say it's been done on paper. You must, you must enforce, you must check, you must make sure that they are meeting their milestones and all of those things. Yeah. So yeah, it's work in progress for everyone. Um, from the civil servant to the political leadership, the legislation, all of us, everybody, ha all hands have to be on deck. Uh, people like me, the reason we are worried, upset, is because it's taking too long. We want to see strong policies, we want to see strong institutions, we want to see performance over a period of time that says, all right, based on this performance, there's hope. Not just because we're being told, but we can see for ourselves. There are just seven months. <laughs> yeah, well, is that enough time? <laughs> well, many of the people in office today have been in the corridors of power for the last 30 years. That excuse is untenable. Yes, it's seven months where another man has executive powers, but he's a Nigerian. He didn't come from anywhere else. He knows the problems. And if he was serious, and I believe he is, and anyone going up to where they say, I want to be president is serious, he must have been studying the problems before he started campaigning. So I don't, I don't buy the seven months thing. Yeah, well, you have ministers. You have to give them time to settle down and so on. So yeah, I can see that. But the bigger issues, power, infrastructure, security, there should be a plan in place and a sensible plan as well. Mm. So uh, back to you, uh, to Tanibu. Uh, also, uh, the issue of security, was uh, improving security was also mentioned. Now, in your view, what more needs to be done to address the Nigerian security? A whole lot. A whole lot. <laughs> we all know everybody that has been affected in one way or the other. We know that uh, the issue of insecurity has been commercialized the security apparatus they are benefiting heavily from it so it's like if you have a going concern business you don't want it to end mm -hmm. if you look at it uh, defense happened to have one of the highest allocation and just within this um, period of uh, still, um, period that we are we know the killings that happen in bokos in um, mm -hmm. plateau state there are equally a series of killings in zampara in sokoto the cases of kidnapping as i told you rape and so many incidences of insecurity is appalling is scary a whole community and we all know the reasons we know the powerful people that are behind it we know internal um, international influences we should be able to resolve that because if people cannot even afford to live their basic life or because some certain interests have discovered huge mineral resources in a given area what they just um, do is to wipe out the entire community is to make the lives of those people there a miserable they, 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 they are living so what's your recommendation my, my recommendation is that over time they've adopted a particular strategy that strategy is not working mm -hmm. if you keep on deploying um if it is time for us to negotiate let's negotiate if it's time for the government to we know the people the government they have the best um, security they know where the funding for those terrorists are, are coming from they should be able to cut terrorism uh, financing and you see it has equally links with um corruption that goes on most of the billions being stolen where do you think they normally end up um, in so we know they i don't know 
I go to if you stay, <laughs> there's what you call money laundering. So most of those billions that are being uh, stolen, it ends up financing terrorism. So we need to strengthen our, with the kinetic approach, we need to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Those root causes, they need to, they, as I, I can tell you for free, uh, huge miners, they are mining gold, they are mining californium, they are mining all sorts of abundant mineral resources. They don't want the insecurity to end. We, right now, as I'm talking to you, if you go to Bindengwari, if you go to Zafara, people are still mining. Also, and the whole community has been displaced. They are terrorizing the, uh, the, the citizens and the residents of those communities on a daily basis. Rape has become a constant. You can, if you have a correspondent, you can ask, they will tell you. You see terrorist bandits sending message. They want certain number of um, abductees that should be brought to them for their satisfaction. And you, all these things. You, you, so you now ask. What is the value of the lives of the average Nigerian? It appears that the government does not have, uh, does not place that much of a value. If 165 people can be uh, bombarded out of uh, existence, tomorrow you have uh, another number of people being killed. And for now, if you mm. notice, it has now become a norm. People just take it, oh, it's the numbers that we normally talked about. Mm. Okay, it is 100 today, it is 80 today, it is kidnapping has become a norm everywhere you go. It's not something scary anymore i don't think a lot of nigerians are even confident to move around you cannot travel freely to the various states so how do you expect businesses to thrive when you know that if you travel down to zafara you'll be kidnapped if you go to kasuna you'll be kidnapped. any traveling any journey you are embarking on mm -hmm. not the bad rules you know you are even scared of engaging in any activity it's scary but i think uh, that's a work in progress yeah, the, the timing is too is quite it's taking a long period of time <laughs> So, uh, uh, Sam, now considering uh, the uh, President Tinubu's political history and his uh, and this address, how do you perceive his leadership style and his uh, priorities for Nigeria's future? Well, that's a difficult one because all I know about President Tinubu is what I see. You know, I was in Lagos when he was governor. Mm -hmm. There was an uptick in performance. Mm -hmm and um, all of that. I would say that compared to General Buhari, he has a more hands-on approach. I think that's important. Our people are not mature to the point where you can leave them with big assignments without supervision. And the president has to remember that it's his name on the door, the box stops on his table, and things need to get done. Mm -hmm. But if you don't mind, I'd like to address a little bit about the security issue mm -hmm. that was discussed. Um, there's a saying that's attributable to late General Abacha. I didn't hear him say it myself, so I don't know. With social <laughs> media <laughs> these days, he says, when insecurity persists for more than 24 hours, the state is involved. Um, I don't think that terrorism is a factor of production where exploitation of solid minerals is concerned. There are countries like South Africa, Ghana, all over the world. They exploit minerals. Uh, they do that legally. Everybody gets wealthy. The communities do well. Why should our own be different? What does government have to put in place? Is it that they have to make getting the documentation easier, make export of minerals easier? Does government have to come in and help with some um, stopgap facilities to add value to the minerals before they're shipped out? Something has to be done. I don't think that the blood of innocent people is a factor of production. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, that's uh, at this point to wrap it up on the Nigeria today. We want to appreciate our guests for their time and their expertise. A very thank you to uh, Sam Ikoku, the motivational speaker. Thank you so much thank for you. coming on the program. Thank and you. of course, uh, Tanim, a legal practitioner and a public uh, affairs uh, analyst. Thank, thank you. you so much thank for coming to the program. And thank you for being part of the program. Don't forget Nigeria today is weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTU News at 24. You can also watch these and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTU News 24. Once again, thank you for watching. I am Ikeria Clinton. Goodbye.